Hello everyone, my name is Joe Olesino. I'm an account executive with CCSI, Contemporary Computer Services. I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, VAS, Visibility as a Service. Today our practice manager, Joe Goldberg, will be presenting our Visibility as a Service offering, which provides flexible, dynamic server application monitoring. For those of you not familiar with CCSI, we've been in business since 1974, and our core competencies include infrastructure, data center, IPT, wireless, disaster recovery, security, anything associated with real-time breach detection, risk assessments, penetration testing, and also vulnerability, as well as DDoS solutions, secure mail, and endpoint protection. Also cloud, migration, backup, disaster recovery, and cost containment services. We also are gonna to discuss today application monitoring solutions. And we also provide managed services and managed security services, and also hardware maintenance, third-party break fix. So for any questions, please place them in our WebEx chat. I'd like to take this opportunity and introduce you to Joe Goldberg of CCSI. Thanks, Joe. So today we're gonna to talk about our brand new CCSI visibility services which will help organizations be able to see into their systems and infrastructure to hopefully become more proactive in their uh, troubleshooting. So today we're gonna to talk about a uh, high level, what is monitoring and why you should be doing monitoring. And then we're gonna do an introduction to CCSI's visibility services. And we'll do a uh, short demo. Um, so, why should you monitor? Most people begin monitoring so that they can analyze long-term trends, so that they can see when they're going to be running out of disk space, running out of bandwidth on an internet pipe, or a server might be running out of memory or CPU. They also like to compare over time. I've installed this new application. How has it affected my disk performance? How has it affected my memory utilization? <clears throat> and they obviously want to be alerted. So I'm going to run out of disk space. I'm uh, going to run out of memory. The CPU on the machine is running really high, so things are probably slow. And they want to be able to build dashboards. So this gives you a quick look at how your overall infrastructure is doing and gives you the ability to then drill down and see uh, more detail on your infrastructure. And they want to be able to do a retrospective analysis. They want to look back in time. At, you know, how did we perform a year ago, six months ago, compared to how are we performing today? But the primary purpose of monitoring in the end is you want to know what's broken and why is it broken. So what should you be monitoring? On hosts, you probably want to be looking at CPU, memory, I.O., network, and file system. You want to know if your machine is running too high on the CPU, running out of memory, um, if you're exceeding your disk's performance, if you're exceeding your network capacity, and are you running out of disk space. Containers open up a whole new world. There you care about CPU, you care about memory, you still care about I.O., but you also are going to be caring about restarts, since restarts happen automatically in most cases. And you're also going to care about throttling. If you start running low on CPU or memory, the container systems will start throttling your containers. And that's probably a situation you don't want to be in. And you want to be able to look inside your applications for throughput and latency. If I make a request on a website, how long does it take for me to get a response back? Google has a, uh, a, a program that they call Site Reliability Engineering. They actually, there's actually a really good O'Reilly book about it. And that's how Google runs their, primary, their internal systems. They have what they call the four golden signals, and this is how they do monitoring internally. <clears throat> they look for latency, which is the time it takes to service a request. So if I make a request to a web page, how long does it take for the request to come back? But it's also important to differentiate between a successful request and a failing request. A failing request may take 10 minutes, a successful request may take five minutes. Both might be bad in their own way. So you need to be able to differentiate between the two. Traffic, you need to understand how much demand is being placed on your system at a very high level. How, how much 
is uh, the system being taxed. And you want to understand errors, the rate of requests that are failing, and not just an explicit error like web page can't be found, but also smaller errors like uh, where you get a successful web page coming back but the content is incorrect. That's just as bad. And saturation, how full is your service? Are you running at 100% capacity? Are you starting to overflow? Are customers getting turned away because you don't have enough capacity? And of course, in order to understand when all of this is happening without sitting there staring at the uh, dashboard, you need to have some form of alerting. And you wanna have symptom-based alerting. You don't wanna be told, you know, um, something, something went wrong, but I don't know what went wrong. And you want the alerts to be as proactive as possible. You want them to give you as much notice of an impending problem before it's a problem so that you can take care of it, hopefully invisibly, to your users. And you want to prevent alert fatigue. Anybody who's worked in operations knows that uh, there are those times where you get um, text message after text message after text message for things that are supposedly broken that really aren't. And then after a while, you kind of get, um, you, you get numb to it and uh, some of those alerts may go unanswered. Uh, so you need to limit the false positives, and you also need to set an understanding that a warning is not necessarily an emergency. A warning can be treated like a new feature. It's something that you can put on the schedule and get resolved, hopefully. And in order to make life easy and repeatable, you should have runbooks. Keep them concise, keep them short. You don't need to put you know, the whole theory of operation in it. Just, if you see this, do this. Um, put an explanation of the problem, hints of where to look to resolve it, um, if there are any links to diagrams or other systems that might have information, you can put it in there. And they should be dynamic, the runbooks. So if somebody discovers something new, they should be able to add notes to it so that you know, people can benefit from the experience. And you really want to be as proactive as possible. You don't want to be a firefighter. Um, being in firefighting mode burns out your staff and prevents you from being able to do the projects that will move your organization forward. So what is a CCSI visibility service? It's a monitoring system with a, a time series database. A time series database is one that is based on time as the key rather than a, a standard database. Uh, it provides instrumentation and it's a system that sits there to, to collect metrics and store those metrics and give you um, a way to query them that's uh, very intuitive. It also gives you an alerting system and a dashboarding, graphing, and trending system. And our, see, our visibility services focus on operational systems monitoring, dynamic cloud environments, um, CICD process. We can take it from development through QA, through the automation into production and uh, containers and container organization, uh, orchestration, things like Docker and Kubernetes. And remember, hope is not a strategy. You really need to have a plan before you go into all of this. So just um, a little note on what we can monitor built into the system. The, our system can monitor um, pretty much anything. Um, but these applications are directly instrumented, so we don't need any agents to speak to them. They include Docker and Kubernetes and um, C Advisor, which is used to uh, monitor and grab stats from both Docker and Kubernetes. Um, if you're looking to instrument your libraries, instrument your code as you do in development, we support Clojure, uh, Go, um, three different flavors of Java and the JVM, Python and Node.js, and uh, there's more coming in the near future. And as you can see, we have a, a whole ton of databases that we can support, grabbing enhanced statistics from uh, hardware exporters, uh, messaging exporters, um, storage, so if you're using Hadoop or Ceph or Ceph with Hadoop, um, we can grab really um, in-depth statistics on that, which especially for Hadoop, that's a really critical capability. Um, we can look into your <coughs> web servers like Nginx and Apache, um, your uh, proxies like Varnish and Traffic, and even into uh, some log exporters like FluentD. 
and we have API exporters as well. So services like AWS ECS and SQS and any digital ocean services, um, Docker Cloud, um, Rancher, Open Weather Map, they all have expo API exporters so that we can grab information and be able to do performance monitoring. And we can also grab from other monitoring systems. So if you've already got, if you're using AWS CloudWatch, we can grab stats from that. If you're using InfluxDB or New Relic or Nagios or any of these, we can also grab SNMP stats. And there's a bunch of miscellaneous um, exporters. So everything from uh, Bamboo and Bitbucket all the way to uh, you can monitor your Minecraft server. <laughs> so we can uh, kind of we can do the uh, entire gamut. So that's really um, what the visibility as a service is. I'm going to give you guys a, a really quick demo because I left it in the presentation. <laughs> this is, let's say you have a, a Docker infrastructure. This would be a dashboard that we can create. These are fully customizable. I mean, I can move uh, the, the gauges around, create new ones. But this is looking at the Docker machine that the, this monitoring instance is actually running on. I have six running containers, the overall CPU utilization on the server itself, overall memory and file system use. And then I break out the CPU based on per container. I break out memory per container and network per container. And I can make sure that my monitoring server is running cleanly. I can create uh, all sorts of graphs that are looking into the monitoring system to ensure that everything is running smoothly. If I have a Linux server, I can look into the Linux server with a node exporter and grab stats as basic as CPU and RAM, but also we can get really specific. We can look at the memory stack and network traffic and disk use, um, IOPS, IO usage time. Um, we can look at the disk read write times. You can drill down and get some very specific stats. And we're grabbing these every 15 seconds. We can go down to five seconds or up to five minutes if, if you want. But in, in today's day and age, the old mo way of monitoring where you collect stats every five minutes really doesn't work since the average uh, container can be around for less than five minutes and you need to be able to grab those stats. We can even look at a Windows server this is a, uh, here we go over to our VMware server. So this is a, a Windows server. We're looking at a bunch of processes to make sure that they're up and running, the CPU. And I'm looking at the CPU on this specific process, the Silence process. Silence is a great endpoint protection product, by the way, if you're looking for uh, ransomware protection. But I can look at any service that's running on the, on the machine. I can look at the CPU, the win and it processes nothing. Um, Google Update's not doing anything either. Of course, I picked the ones that have nothing going on. Now, the WMI exporter, which is exporting these stats, that also has uh, some work going on. I can look at memory and network and really drill down into uh, what's going on on the server. And that's, we can generate da custom dashboards and stats like these for pretty much any service. This is an AD server, and DNS server that we're looking at here. So I can see the number of DNS queries, LDAP connections, stuff like that. I can check on um, AD replication. Um, and anything that we can monitor is stuff that we can also alert on. If we can monitor it, we can alert on it, and uh, we can create custom alerts and send them either via email, PagerDuty, VictorOps, Slack, uh, Microsoft Teams, and of course our 24 by 7 NOC will be monitoring this as well and reaching out to you based on the uh, agreement that's in your role. And that's it. Thank you, Joe. And thank you everyone for your time today. I'll be following up to discuss next steps. Thank you and have a great day.